Today on the Railway Room it's part two of my video of restoring the old white metal that goes from my dad's rail. Hello friends, welcome back to the Railway Room. So today it's part two of my video of restoring my dad's old white metal the Railway Night Locos. So if you've seen part one, um, I've got the chassis up and running again now. Uh, if you haven't watched that yet, uh, there'll be a link up in the corner somewhere. Um, so let's uh, get on with it and have a look at the bodies. Okay, so I've managed to get the uh, chassis running again now, uh, but we're not finished yet because uh, these locos have been in storage for the best part of 15 to 20 years and frankly they are uh, showing it a little worse for wear. So for example they are quite filthy, there's lots of dust and muck accumulated on them and uh, the bodies are actually uh, starting to suffer as well so Charles's smoke box is no longer attached. Uh, I don't know if we uh, you noticed it earlier but the uh, body for Talachin is virtually in two pieces held together with a slight whisper of glue so uh, and then also we've got things like the paint work starting to chip away so the next thing I want to do is try and spruce the bodies back up a bit um, and maybe add a little extra detailing while still being true to the uh, the authentic originals and when I say originals I don't mean the prototypes that these locos are based on but the original versions of these models as they were originally built uh, by my dad in the 90s so certain things like uh, the outside frame was on Charles uh, Prince the cab profile is not correct inherent things uh, issues with the, the model uh, kits themselves I'm not going to try and fix those but I will sort out little things like maybe putting extra some coal in the bunkers, some fire irons, adding crew. Uh, Charles, for example, already has uh, one crew member, but he's uh, purely uh, black plastic. He hasn't been painted, so I'll paint him up, add some fire irons on there, things like that, just to try and make them look uh, as nice as I can. So uh, the first thing I want to do is clean up all the muck off them. So I'm just going to get a little uh, cotton bud and give them a bit of a, a bit of a wash over. So you can see on here there's lots of muck and stuff accumulated. Does he? Hey, there we go. So you can see that he's got a thing there, that's why. So I'll, uh, I'll give him a bit of a paint up and uh, put him back in the cab. And um, I've also I've got some foam on the insides of there. I'm assuming that's uh, for the protection of the motor. I'll see if I can squidge that back in. Let's take that out. And so you can see we've got some uh, glue marks on the inside of the cab here. I'll uh, scrape those off maybe. And uh, there's old glue on the bottom of the, uh, the foot plate. I'll be scraping that off in a bit. The old bucket on the front there. It should be in the centre. I'm not sure why it's off to the side. Let's put it out there. A whole bunch of extra glue residue here. And there's glue residue on the front there. If I can find my knife and see if we can scrape some of this off. There 
Okay, that's looking a bit better now. Uh, but obviously I'll be uh, redoing the, uh, the paintwork along there. Okay, so what have we got on the uh, small box? Just make sure that's all free from glue on the inside. Let's see. Let's see if I can get some of this glue residue off the front here as well. Oh, it's sticky stuff. Oh, I'm pinging it all over. Dark. Oh, what? Let's just move these other chaps out of the way. Right, so even if it's not an authentic uh, pen rin livery, I quite like the uh, the lining out uh, that Dad's done on the uh, on the body there. So I'm gonna try and not repaint the main part of the body. I might redo the. Uh, the dome perhaps. Um, I'll probably have to redo this front patch because there's so much mess from all the, uh, the glue residue. Okay, so that's uh, Charles all cleaned up now. And uh, you may have noticed uh, that Charles uh, and Tarachlin as well have rather unusual couplings. These just these bits of uh, of a kind of wire, and the reason for that is that these uh, were designed to run on uh, his layout, which has extremely tight corners, and uh, they uh, tended to get coupling lock with the uh, traditional 009 couplings. So these um, enable them to basically get them to haul things around rather tight corners, which is particularly important uh, when you consider there's uh, quite a lot of uh, overhang from the wheels to the back of the cab, so that's the reason for the uh, slightly odd couplings. And because, uh, my layout where they're going to be running now uh, has much uh, more gentle curves, so I may actually uh, swap those out for more uh, traditional couplings, I've not quite yet decided. Um, because on the one hand, it would be nice to keep them authentic to the uh, the original versions, which is my aim. But at the other, on the other hand, my dad's already started to swap those couplings out for traditional couplings on uh, Dogoch and Prince uh, when uh, he was using them on his newer layout, which uh, has much more gentle curves as well. Okay, so here is Charles. And I've just touched up the one or two bits of the paintwork where it was starting to come away, but the paint on this one was actually pretty decent. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is to glue his smoke box back on. And to do that I'm just going to put the, uh, the body into place. If I can snap it in. just to make sure it sits right. Uh, the interesting thing to remember is that this is going to glue to the uh, boiler and the saddle tank, not to the foot plate. Because the uh, screw here, that is how the body attaches to the uh, chassis. So if I glue the smoke box down to the chassis, it's going to be impossible to get it open to uh, do any maintenance to the chassis. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue purely on the side, none on the bottom. And then hopefully I'm going to be able to just push that into position and get it looking reasonably straight. And I've also got the uh, the driver. This is his original driver, but he's all painted up now, so he's not just pure black plastic. So I'll glue him into position once the uh, smoke box is done. That's feeling fairly decent. So I'm just going to bob the uh, 
the old pocket book has gone, so bit of glue. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, something like that. Hopefully, that's going to stick. Uh, so now the uh, smoke box and the uh, and the bucket's nicely dried. I've just loosely managed to squeeze the driver into the cab, but there's no glue on him yet. And I've done it that way because it was very, very difficult to squeeze him in there. And I didn't want to get glue on his feet to just go everywhere. So I'm just going to squeeze a bit of glue onto his foot now. And then hopefully I'll be able to get him down in position and uh, clear off any excess glue. And now we've got the uh, space on here for fire irons, but he's never had any. So I'm just going to get out of the box. I've got these. Uh, of little fire irons and stuff. So I'm just going to get a couple of these long ones and bob them in on there. Uh, so I'll just go cut them off the front and uh, bring them back. So it's just going to be a little bit of glue in these, hopefully. I want enough to hold it, but not so much that it's visible and jarring. And then let's see if I can please in. Yes, much more like it. So you can see there's quite a few bits and pieces on prints where the uh, paint's starting to come up. Now. Seems to be mostly on the on the black rather than the red, which is one of those things I can. Uh, black's a fairly easy colour to uh, use, but I'm not sure about this red. I may have to uh, completely repaint it. So I'm not sure I can get the, uh, the correct shade of red. I'm not sure what colour he actually used in the first place. So uh, Prince was one of the uh, the first ones to stop working. I think it was either Prince or Charles. Certainly both of those were not working when I shot my video of the layout. So uh, it is going to be one of the uh, the muckiest. And there's the tender. So it's, it's pretty uh, filthy. Oh wow, there's uh, fire irons in the tender. Can't say he's had spotted those, because they were all covered in muck. So I've been around and I've uh, tried to cover up the bits where the paint was starting to uh, come away. There's still a little bit of tidying up to do uh, in a few places. And uh, One thing I have done is I've used a bronze paint just to pick out the uh, fire irons on there, to make them stand out a bit more. And I have noticed a couple of things with this. So one is that we've got a pipe along the front here that's painted in red. Now actually on the uh, prototype in this livery that should be black. So I'm just going to get a bit of uh, masking tape, mask either side of it, and then I'm going to paint that over in black. And the other interesting thing is we've got all these little dints here on both sides. Now these um, are essentially pilot holes for handrails. But uh, this particular build, he, uh, my dad never put uh, handrails on it. So I'm going to do that. And what I've got is uh, what do these RJ Details uh, short handrail knobs come from light railway stores. So I'm just going to drill into these holes as well. And then I'm going to add handrails, which he's uh, never had before. So one thing I do want to do something with is all this moulded coal in uh, 
Princess Tender. Just the way the kit's designed, but still I can make it look a bit better than that. So I'm just going to paint over a little bit of watered down PVA. I mean, I hope this is going to look better. I can't imagine it's going to look much worse. And I've got my tub of genuine Welsh coal, so I'm just going to drop a selection of this on. There's a lot of dust there. Let's see if we can get some actual lumps as well. Lovely tipply. And then I'll just spray a little uh, watered down PVA over the top just to get that all glued in nicely. And somewhere I've also got a shovel which I'm just going to drop in as well uh, just to, to set off the fire irons that are already there. Okay, so I've just drilled out the three holes on the side of the body there and I've got a bit of brass rail and I've stuck my three handrails on. The one on this end is glued in position. These two are just loose. Uh, this I think is a 0.33 millimeters uh, brass rod that I'm going to use. So my plan is I've uh, checked these holes at a suitable size before starting. So I will try and, I don't know if I can do this on camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. So the plan is to start with this end and get him into position. And then uh, I might need to glue it in, but it's going to be very tricky. So now I've worked out where that end one's going to be. I'm just going to put a tiny tab of glue. So yeah, before my camera rather rudely ran out of battery, I put the first one into position and then went through and marked up where the other ones are going to line up and then put a bit of glue onto uh, each of the position to get the uh, handrail knobs glued into place and then taking it out so that I can now put the glue in and put the, uh, the handrail into position as I've done on this side already. Something like that. Uh, so one extra thing uh, is that when I was at Wally I picked up a set of these from Dundas Models, which is uh, Festiniog uh, decals from Langley. I think these are actually quite a new release. Uh, so you've got coach, uh, coach class numbers, uh, North Wales narrow gauge uh, lettering, and all these Festiniog and Welsh Island crests. So I thought it'd be a good idea to try them out and uh, pop them onto the tender because that's uh, a little detail that he's uh, never had before. So I've just prepared the area uh, with a little of this uh, Vallejo uh, decal fix. I've just lightly brushed that over where it's going to go uh, just to uh, clean the area and prepare it. And this is the transfer so I'm just going to put that in my water 
Uh, once the uh, transfer is in place, I'm then going to put a little bit of this, uh, again, Vallejo decal softener on it. Uh, so theoretically what this should do is uh, protect and smooth the decal, so help it blend it into the, uh, the uh, side. And once that's done, I'll then uh, give it a quick spray of matte varnish over the top as well, just to blend the edges of that. Yeah. You can see the decal started to come off the backing already. So, uh, I need more hands. Okay, so there's the backing off. And I just need to try and edge that into something approaching the position. So at the moment you can really see the cut square edges around the decal. It's just tiny dub. And then, and then I'll just ease that over. Yeah, that was probably a little bit too much of that to be honest. Make sure I get the edge of that in. So that's not really showing the uh, the white part of the uh, of the uh, the logo up. It's just coming through as kind of red. So that's a little bit disappointing, to be honest. Um, I don't know as if I would purchase another set of these transfers necessarily. Um, I think they'd be really good if you're transferring them onto a white surface, but a, a darker colour like this red, it's not quite worked the way that I would have hoped. Um, but still, it's better than uh, not having a transfer on there at all, so uh, yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Let's have a go at Tarakhan. Right, again, is a very, very mucky logo, and I think there you go, it's back in two parts again. So, yeah, with Tarakhan, I really like all the plates and things. Well, I've noticed that the uh, the back of the cab at the top there hasn't quite lined up properly. Now I'm assuming that's going to be quite tricky to get that down and flat. So I may just run a knife down there and see if I can get those apart, get that together nicer. Uh, first let's get all this nasty nasty glue residue away. Yeah, there's a fair chance, and I am going to need to uh, repaint the whole logo because it's all it's gone very funny on the inside there. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the same shade of green. Oh, yes, there we go. That's helpful. Great, so what I'll do is I'm just going to dump this bit into a, a cleaning solution, get all the paint off, and then I can uh, repaint this from scratch. And that'll be, uh, be much better than trying to repaint over the top. And I might as well take the other toolbox off. Talachlin uh, is now a healthy sum of bits. Um, glue residue in here from where clearly she had a driver who has now moved on to drive a different logo. Let's see if I can get all of that glue off there. Yeah, yucky. Okay, so I had a problem with the, the roof, it wasn't quite lined up. So I um, just managed to pull it apart. So hopefully I'll be able to get that lined up. But you can see uh, there's a nice cab detail inside there, even the reversing lever and everything. So uh, that's rather nice. This is a, this is a good, uh, good quality kit, is this? It's a shame it's not made anymore, but with the uh, 
back when ready to run version due imminently. I suspect there's probably not really the core for it also with the back when Scarlet. Yeah, so that's one thing that I did think was probably going to happen. Uh, oh, bent that a little bit. Ah! Yeah, so the uh, cab has come apart quite considerably. So I am going to have to uh, glue this back together even more than I had bargained on. But that's, uh, it's not, it's not too bad. Uh, there was, there was, there was a, there's a few points where the uh, green paint on this isn't uh, quite starting to come away. So I was thinking I was probably gonna have to repaint anyway. All of the glue off there. So the roof should be completely uh, straight and it wasn't. But I'm going to have to uh, repaint over there, so I'm going to have to repaint all of the uh, green on this. So I'm probably just going to dump this into a vat of... Uh, well, I say a vat. There's a, a little tub of uh, cleaning liquid and just clean all of the paint. And to be honest, I'm probably just going to do everything. I don't think there's anything I particularly want to keep. There's nothing that's really going to be unreplicable. So, uh, yeah, I think Talatone's going to be the biggest job. Um, I will have to completely repaint Dalachlan from scratch. So what I'm going to use for this is just a standard supermarket multi-surface cleaner. Uh, just a cheap one, but I find it gets the job, job done really well. Just leave everything in it overnight. So I'm just going to get all the bits where I'm going to need to repaint. Mm. Yeah, so uh, they're all nicely covered out and I'll just leave that overnight. Okay, we can see here after leaving them overnight, all of the uh, paint on there has started to come away. So, we get some... And it just... comes away. So I've got this old... Uh, cheap toothbrush uh, that I uh, saved specifically for this purpose. Um, so I'll go through all the bits and just brush all of the uh, the old paint off and then I'll give them a, a bit of a wash in uh, regular soapy water just to get rid of all the residue of the uh, the cleaner. Okay so I've got a kit of Talatron bits there and they're uh, all rinsed off and cleaned uh, there's a couple of little bits where I've not been able to get all of the paint off where it's uh, gone into the glue um, but I think that's pretty good. Um, what I have done is uh, primed and painted the inside of the cab just because that's going to be really difficult to uh, paint up properly once the cab's put together. So now I'm just going to glue it all back together and uh, then get it uh, repainted. Oh, friend, so I just screwed the uh, rear of the cab back onto there. I can work out where that's going to sit. And I'm just going to put glue. Being very careful not to get any into the motor or the gears, obviously. Very delicate operation. So this, this part here does seem to be the very weak link in this kit. It's no wonder that's the point at which the kit 
failed first time. So here's number one, uh, she's back together now and uh, painted back up. Uh, it was a Tamiya uh, green paint, um, I'll put the, uh, the code in. Um, I like, sprayed it over quickly with a, uh, a matte varnish just because the, uh, the green was a little bit too gloss. Um, and I've just popped a bit of plastic art in the top of the bunkers. So the one on the, uh, the driver's side is not used as a coal bunker, so I've just kept that uh, as a flat top. And the one on the, uh, the fireman's side is where the coal goes, so the, that uh, plastic card there is a little bit lower than the top. So I'm just going to put some actual coal in there. And to do that, I'm just going to get a little bit of, uh, of the old PVA on a really old paintbrush and then I'm just going to paint some of that down some decent bits Probably a little too big as well. Yeah, that's a good size coal load, I think. And I'll do the same thing for number two. It's never had any coal, so let's just put some. There's been a couple of extra tweaks that I've done off camera as well. So let's just go through each uh, loco one at a time and have a look at them. Uh, so Dog Ock first has got the least amount of changes. So what I've done is I've added a little uh, real coal into the bunker and I've added a name plate. And at the back we've got the uh, number plate there as well. Uh, those plates are from Narrow Planet from their Dog Ockification kit for the uh, Backman Reneus. Uh, I didn't use those on my uh, Renaeus conversion because I used transfers for the name instead and it was uh, representing a version where it didn't use have the, uh, the number two plate on. And the only other change to this is that she now has a driver but because the uh, motor is in the cab for this uh, Gem Arnold kit, technically She's only got half a driver, so I've just chopped him in half and lightly PVA'd him on so that I can easily remove him if we need to. And that's it, that's Dolgoch. So the uh, next loco is Charles, and again very little uh, done to this apart from touching up the paintwork and uh, cleaning it off. I've added some extra fire irons on here now, and the driver has been fully painted. He now has works plates for the first time. Uh, those came from RT models, uh, although the uh, fret for them was actually marked Narrow Planet, so uh, I think they were made for, uh, on behalf of RT models by Narrow Planet. Um, and obviously I've glued the uh, smoke box back into place. So now here we've got Talachren, which had the uh, heaviest overhaul out of all four, uh, having been 
pretty much taken apart back to kit form and rebuilt and fully repainted. So now her dome is painted as per the prototype rather than brass as the original and the cab reef is much smoother there than it was. Uh, other tweaks and changes, she's now got some uh, real coal in the bunker and she did originally have a driver uh, but uh, for some reason when she was taken out of uh, service I think her driver got taken off to uh, work on another loco so she's now got a new driver um, fully painted up and other than that it's pretty much uh, business as usual for uh, Talithlin looking uh, as good as ever she did if I do say so myself so the loco with the biggest number of changes, even if they're not the most significant in terms of rebuilding, was Prince. So I've added uh, handrails and the front and the grab rails up by the tank pillars as well. I've got the black edging onto the, uh, the lining of the livery, which was never on it before. Um, this livery should have lining around as well. I don't have any suitable transfers for that lining at the moment, so that's something to put in there. Uh, as a potential future update, um, but I'll just leave her in the plain red for now. And so we've got the uh, Langley transfers on there now. So we've got real coal on top of the moulded coal. There's a new shovel there. These are the original moulded fire irons. I've just painted them in a little uh, metallic colour just to make them pick them out a bit more. If I was building this kit new now, I would probably chop that door out um, so you can actually get into the cab easier and have a driver in there um, but it's a little bit too much work I think at this stage to get in and do that. I've also painted the brake pipes front and back into black they were just plain metal before and I've just painted it over the name just so that it's a bit more legible than it was before otherwise that's Prince um, and all four now up and ready for service and so there's all four of them lined up again and ready to enter service. I've got four preserved model locos to run on my model preserved railway. And at some point I may well wind up uh, doing a bit more work on these, replacing the motors uh, with some uh, more modern cordless motors, something like that. Uh, if I do I will uh, film the process and upload that as a future update. Uh, but for now I'm happy enough with the way these are running. Uh, they're probably going to have a uh, fairly uh, small amounts of use, they're not going to be uh, regular everyday locos I would think, uh, more for special occasions. Um, so thank you for watching, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and found it interesting. Um, if you did, you know, feel free to do the comment, like, subscribe, all of that jazz. Um, until next time, thank you again, thank you!